Hi everyone. Now uh, we will be discussing about uh, we'll be solving some problems on z parameters. So under this topic uh, you'll be given with a circuit and you're asked to find the z parameter. So we can uh, solve this problem in many other uh, many methods but uh, easiest of all I'll let you know so that uh, you can follow it throughout this uh, course and uh, follow it for other entrance exams as well to solve it very quickly. By using the governing equations of uh, z parameters that are v1 is equal to z11 i1 plus z12 i2 and v2 is equal to z21 i1 plus z22 i2. By these equations also you can find out as I have done in the derivation of uh, representing a two port network uh, with the z parameters you you will be setting the independent variables those are um, you will be setting first time i1 is equal to 0 and the second time i2 is equal to 0 so you will be getting z parameters z11 z12 z21 z22 that is one of the way to do it but the easiest way is we know that uh, z parameters when you hear the word z parameters the basic law that comes to our mind is kvl right so the governing equations which i have written already are v1 is equal to z11 i1 plus z12 i2 and v2 is equal to z21 i1 and z22 i2 these follow kvl so if i from this circuit if i am able to get two equations in this fashion right in this fashion that is v1 is equal to something into i1 plus some constant into i2 and v2 is equal to some constant into i1 plus some const some other constant into i2 then we can equate the the equations what we get with the governing equations those are mentioned here right and hence we will be able to get the uh, z parameters easily so now if you look at this equa uh, this circuit they have given the branch currents here right i1 and i2 right so it's basically not a good idea you can uh, solve the problem uh, using the branch currents as well but basically it is not a good idea uh, if you are if you want to solve a problem qu quickly so we have studied about uh, mesh analysis in ma in our uh, previous uh, uh, tutorial so we'll use the uh, say mesh analysis to find two equations since you have two loops this is one loop this is second loop so you will have two equations and then you equate them to the governing equations which i have mentioned on the right hand side here so then you will get uh, then you will be able to find out the uh, z parameters now i will take the loop current in the first loop as i1 right this as i2 right i have taken i2 in uh, the anti clockwise direction because i2 the current which is mentioned here is entering the entering the circuit from outside and even the um, uh, current i1 is entering the circuit so i have taken the loop current that or the mesh current i1 and this capital i1 and i2 as uh, one is clockwise and other one in anti clockwise direction in the direction of the branch currents i1 and i2 right these are this is one of the branch currents this is another branch current so their directions are left to right and uh, right to left so i have taken the loop currents i1 this i1 and this i2 in the same direction Correct. now applying kvl to loop 1 apply kvl to loop 1 so what do you get is uh, minus 2 plus you have potential rise so it will be plus plus v1 and since the current is moving from left to right so this has to be plus this has to be minus so it will be minus 2l into i1 current into resistance i think every one of us knows how to write uh, kvl and here to uh, through the 6 ohm see current is flowing from top to bottom so, so this has to be at higher potential and this has to be at the lower potential and at the same time i2 is also this current i2 this uh, second loop current i2 is flowing from 
top to bottom so this also is plus to minus so by taking this into consideration now if i if i complete my kvl it is minus 12 i1 and plus to minus it is minus 6 i1 right we are traversing in this way i mean uh, clockwise direction so again you have plus 2 minus of uh, the current i2 so minus 6 i2 is equal to 0 right and you are back to this point starting point we started from this point we ended at the same point so we have completed the uh, complete loop so rearranging this we will be getting v1 is equal to 18 i1 plus 6 i2 right i will take this as equation 1 right now you can check that equation 1 is in sync with the governing equation 1 here or uh, you, if you are to mention this as uh, 3 and this equation as 4 equation 1 is in sync or in the same similar terms as that of equation 3 is having the same terms of that of equation 3 so we can find out z11 z12 from this equation number one now applying kvl kvl to loop two i'll go in the anti-clockwise direction starting from this end so minus two plus again plus v2 the current here is moving from right to left so this has to be positive this has to be negative so it will be minus three i2 current is flowing from top to bottom on this side so it is minus 6 i2 and the the other current that is flowing through 6 i uh, 6 ohm is this left current i1 so it is minus 6 i1 and we are back to the original point so if you rearrange this it will be v2 is equal to 6 i1 plus 9 i2 now if i mention this as equation number two and now if you solve i mean uh, if you check out the governing equations as well as the governing equation as well as equation number one and two you will feel that they have the same representation so we can compare equation number one and equation number three equation number two and equation number four so you can write here compare equation one with equation three and it's a logical and equation two with equation four you get z11 as 18 z12 as 6 z21 as 6 that is present here and z22 as 9 so i think comparing is is very easy comparing equation 1 and 3 so wherever you have z11 you have 18 z12 it is 6 so the z parameter of this circuit are 18 6 and 6 and 9 this is the z parameter 